if a firm gets better at what it does, from one period to the next, it creates new economic value. That value goes not only to shareholders, usually much or most of it goes to a broader set of stakeholders. This is central to business strategy, central to our courses and research, but we are seldom quantitative or precise about it. Recently, the Business Roundtable in the United States affirmed that the purpose of a corporation is to create value not only for shareholders, but also for a broader set of stakeholders, including customers, employees, and suppliers. With my co-authors, Roberto Garcia Castro and Natarajan Balasubramanian, uh, we published an article in the June 2017 issue of the SMJ titled, Measuring Value Creation and Appropriation in Firms, the VCA Model. This is one of two papers that we've published in the SMJ on this topic. In these papers, we distinguish between shareholder value and total economic value, and between measures of value within a given time period and measures of value based on the change between one time period and the next. Measures of shareholder value within a given time period would include profit, return on assets, uh, the firm stock price, and measures of the change between one period and the next would be the change in those measures. Uh, for example, the change in profit or the change in stock price. Measures of total economic value come from economics. Economists talk about total surplus uh, being the total economic value within a given time period, and that's equal to the firm's profit or producer surplus plus the value of consumer surplus. Uh, it's a great conceptual measure. The problem is it is extremely difficult empirically to pin down consumer surplus. So we've got good empirical measures of shareholder value, but some real difficulties in measuring total economic value, at least within a given time period. We argue in our paper that one can get around some of these problems by focusing on this quadrant, the change in total economic value between one period and the next. And we call our model for measuring this change in total economic value and the distribution of that value the VCA model for value creation and appropriation. Our model starts with the simple idea that the revenues flowing into the firm are equal to the revenues flowing out. Revenues come in from customers and go out to employees, to suppliers, and to shareholders. This can be expressed by the equation that you see here. If we take changes in this equation from one period to the next, we get another equation that is the VCA model. The VCA model expresses the incremental value created by the firm from one period to the next in two different ways that must be equal to each other. On the left hand side here we have the value created by the firm and on the right hand side we have the value distributed by the firm. We apply this methodology to data on seven U.S. airlines over three decades, uh, the 1980s, the 1990s, and 2000 to 2010. In each decade for each airline, we measure the total economic incremental value created in that decade, as well as the distribution of that value to employees, to customers, to shareholders, and to two kinds of suppliers, to fuel suppliers and all other suppliers. We find that all of the airlines created a substantial amount of incremental economic value over these three decades. And perhaps not surprisingly, most of this value went to customers. But the airlines differed in their strategies, and this shows up in the calculations. Uh, to give one example, at Southwest Airlines, uh, employees captured a substantial amount of value as their wages rose from the very lowest in the industry to the very highest. And also, oil prices fluctuated dramatically over this period, uh, and that led to large shifts in value capture. Uh, as oil prices fell and rose, value flowed into and out of the airline sector. 
We believe that the VCA model has considerable potential for application in strategic management research, but there are some important caveats. Uh, perhaps the most important relates to data. It's necessary that the firms or business units be relatively undiversified. It's necessary to have a measure of real output, either a physical measure or a price deflator that can be applied against revenues. And it's necessary to have data on the number of employees as well as their total wages, salaries, and benefits. Uh, if those items are available, the model can usually be reasonably applied. For those who are interested in more details about the model, uh, we invite you to take a look at our paper.